Okay, so we are in uh, exercise 2D. So I will now move on to question number two. Okay, so we are going to be working with uh, conservation of energy and uh, the work energy principle. Okay, so how does this work? Let's say a particle of mass M is suspended from a fixed point O by a light elastic string of natural length A and modulus of velocity 4 mg. So when they say it's suspended, what do you mean suspended? It means it's hanging, right? So natural length is A, lambda is 4 mg. So they're suspended, which, is, which means it's hanging <coughs> vertically. The particle is pulled vertically downward a distance d from its equilibrium position. Do you notice that? They pull it a distance d down from where? From the equilibrium position. So what do you mean by equilibrium position? You know when there is, uh, when you hang a particle, okay, so when you suspend the particle, will it be at its natural length? No, it will be a little bit uh, beyond the natural length, right? So basically uh, because of the weight, it will displace due to the weight. So over here, if this is the natural length, natural length is A, right? <clears throat> yeah, natural length is A. So there is some sort of an extension here due to the weight, agreed? We have some extension here due to the weight. Uh, so I think we can find that extension, right? At the equilibrium position, this is what we call as the equilibrium position. So we can find this uh, extension first, right? So let's get this extension. So at the equilibrium position, what's the weight? The weight is uh, 4 mg. Weight is 4 mg and you have the tension. The tension at the equilibrium position. So I will say it's T1. Okay, so we have the tension at the equilibrium position. Okay, I just, I'll just use this uh, as T. Okay, so now what's gonna happen? Sorry, uh, not 4 mg, right? The weight is, uh, sorry, mass is m. So mass is m means uh, weight is mg. Sorry, I was using weight is mg. Okay. So now let's uh, get the value of this x. So what we know here, if it's in equilibrium, tension must be equal to the weight because it's in equilibrium, tension equals weight. And what, all, what, what else also uh, do we know about tension? We can use Hooke's law, tension equals lambda x over L. So lambda x over L, shall we find the tension value? So lambda is 4 mg, x is the extension and natural length L is A. And T value tension is equal to mg. And now you can make x the subject. Right? You can see here mg, mg cancels out and you get here x equals A over 4. You get x equals A over 4. And now I have my x value. So the extension I have is in terms of a. Okay, so now <clears throat> we'll move to the next part. What are they saying? Uh, the particle is pulled vertically downward, a distance d from its equilibrium position. So this is the equilibrium position. It was balancing perfectly with the wave. But now what are they doing? They say they pull it a further distance d below its equilibrium position. I all with me. So what are we doing here? This is the natural length. Let me just draw this line. So this was the natural length A. This is the uh, length A over 4, the natural extension. And they say, now this is the equilibrium position. Guys, what I drew in red here is the equilibrium position. So what do we need here? They say they are pulling it a distance D below the equilibrium position. You're pulling a distance d below the equilibrium position. And what are they say? And they're releasing it from rest. So you take it over here, you release it from rest. The particle just reaches O. I think you can see the, what is O. O is the place where we fix the fixed point O, right, at the top. So O is the point at the top. So they say when you release it, okay, you pull this from the equilibrium position, you hold it, and you release it from rest. And immediately they say this goes up. Obviously, it goes up. And they say it just comes to, uh, it just reaches so. What do you mean by the word just reaches so? What is the significance in using the word just reaches o? Now you do realize the moment now you, when you release it, you release it from rest, but you know, can you do see, I mean, I hope you can see it in your head that it is, uh, it will uh, quickly move, start going, moving upwards, right? Kind of like accelerating and moving upwards and then and then after a certain point, you can see when it passes the equilibrium position, I mean, when it moves up, you do need to see that 
it will start to lose its velocity again. And then when it just reaches the mean drag, so there is some point where it actually reaches the highest position, right? So they say that highest position is actually at the very top. So it just barely reaches O, which means that the, uh, when this particle goes to the very top, the velocity will actually become zero. The velocity will actually become zero. <clears throat> okay. So that's what you have to do here. So basically, here, the over here, uh, velocity is zero, the starting point, and the ending point also, the velocity is zero. Okay, so then uh, so you realize here at the top, it, when it reaches to the top point here, velocity will be zero, starting uh, velocity is also zero. So by the way, over here, we, can now, we know that we are supposed to use energy. They're asking you to find D. They're asking you to find this D. Okay, so to find this D, uh, obviously we are going to be using energy here. So what, which uh, rule do we go with? Is it the work energy principle? Or is it conservation of energy? Is energy conserved here? Or do we have any external force? That does work here? No, right? We do not have any resistive force. We do, we do not consider weight uh, component or weight as a resistive force. That's gravity. So there are no external resistive forces. Therefore, energy must be conserved. So can we talk about the uh, energy uh, uh, conservation here? At the bottom, over here, what do we have? You have elastic potential energy. This is fully stretched. So you have elastic potential energy, which is at the beginning. Initially, you have elastic potential energy. And when you reach the top, so these are the two positions I can see at the very beginning and at the very end. Okay, so both the places, velocity is zero, which means there will be no kinetic energy. So over here, you have elastic potential energy, which you are going to lose or which you're going to gain. When you are moving up, you know, elastic potential energy depends on the extension. So if you are uh, losing the extension, if you are reducing the extension, you lose the elastic potential. So elastic potential energy loss. That's the energy you have over here. It will be equal to what? It's, it will be fully converted to over here when you go. It's the GP. It's the uh, potential energy, PE. And it is when you're moving up, we say potential energy gains. Isn't it? So this is the full energy conversion. And at the top, do you have any elastic potential energy or any of that sort? No, right? Okay, uh, so now let me make our equation. So let's substitute the elastic potential energy loss is lambda x square over 2L. Potential energy is mgh, shall we substitute? So lambda is 4mg. What is the extension? Extension at this uh, position over here. So extension is the length that you are stretched beyond the natural length. So how much have we stretched beyond the natural length at this point over here? Yeah, how much have we stretched beyond the natural length when you are over here? It is D plus uh, A over 4 plus D. Okay, so lambda x square, extension square over 2 times natural length is A equals MGH. So M, mass is M, right? Mass, of course, is M, G. And what about the height? What about the vertical height that you are climbing? What is the vertical height that you because you reach the very top? So what is the ma'am? So the total length you are climbing is a plus a over four plus d. And your task is now what? Make uh, d the subject. Okay, your task is to make d the subject in this equation. So we'll cut the mg. Uh, I can cut two and four over here, two times one, two times two. Okay, so I get here 12, two times A over four plus B whole thing square, divide by A, right? Equals A plus A over four is uh, five A over four plus B. Shall we bring the denominator A to the other side? Let's see if we bring this A to the other side, right? Okay, then you have here two times A over four plus D square equals uh, A times five A over four plus D. I think we'll have to expand and uh, get the answer. Let's expand. So A over four plus D square means A over four plus D into A over four plus D, isn't it?
All right, so here two times when you expand the bracket, you get here a square over 16, a over 4 into d uh, is a d over 4. Again, uh, d into a over 4 is a d over 4 plus d into d is d square equals a times, if you expand the bracket here, a into 5a is 5a square over 4 plus a d. Expanding the bracket, this is a 2 into a square over 16 is a square over 8. Uh, a d over 4 into 2 is a d over 2. a d over 4 into 2 is a d over 2 plus uh, 2 times d square equals 5 a square over 4 plus a d, right? Over here, I get uh, a square over 8. a d over 2 plus a d over 2 is simply a d. 2 a d over 2, that's simply a d. Equals 5 a square over 4 plus a d. I think I can see here. There are like terms, plus a d on both the sides. So you can see clearly if you take it to one side, it will cancel out plus and minus. So these two guys should cancel out. Let's make d the subject. So <clears throat> I have here 2d square equal 5a square over 4 minus a square over 8. So typing it in the cal, 5 over 4 minus uh, 1 over 8. How much is it? 5 over 4 minus uh, 1 over 8 is? Nine over eight, so nine over eight, and there's a square. Bringing the two down, you get d square equal nine over sixteen a square. Guys, do you agree? And then d is the root of the whole thing. So when you root the whole thing, you can see that nine becomes three, sixteen becomes four, three or four. And normally, when you put the root, you put plus minus. But over here, it's a length, so we only go for the positive figure. So d equal 3 over 4a. So this is the uh, value of d. That was what they were asking us, right? They were asking us to get the value of d. So we had to find the obviously in terms of a, the, the value of the natural length. So d is 3 fourths of a. Question number three, a light elastic string of natural length 2 well has its uh, ends attached to two points p and q which are at the same horizontal level. The length PQ is 2L. Well. Okay, so basically it's the same as its natural length, right? So let's draw the point PQ. So PQ is equal to 2L. Well. Okay, then what do they do here? Uh, the length PQ is 2L. Well. Okay, a particle of mass M is fastened to the midpoint of the spring. So you are attaching a particle to the middle of the spring. Uh, and is held, uh, the particle of mass M is fastened to the midpoint of the sp uh, spring and is held at the midpoint of PQ. The particle is released from rest and first comes to instantaneous rest when both parts of the string make an angle 60 degree uh, with the line PQ. Guys, do you understand what's happening here? They say they're attaching a particle in the middle. Okay, so they attach this particle to the middle of the uh, string PQ. Okay, and then when you attach the particle, now here P, it's, it's uh, fastened to the two points P and Q. And when you attach this particle to the middle due to the weight, what happens? Now they say they are, you are attaching it here and then you release, the particle is released. Now are we pulling it or anything before we release? No, they don't mention anything like that. They just say the particle is simply released. So which means when you keep it over here, just because of its weight, that is the, the force that's really needed. And so this will start to move down. Can you all understand? This will start to move down. Initial velocity will be zero. It will start to move down until what? Until uh, it comes to, until it comes where? And the first comes to instantaneous rest when both parts of the string make an angle of 60 degree with PQ. So it first comes to rest when the string makes an angle of 60 degree with PQ. Okay, so this is how it works. So remember in this part, uh, we are we are mainly uh, obviously we are going to go with energy here. 
Okay, so basically, what is, where is the movement from the top here to the bottom? Okay, so this is the movement. So you need to consider the energy conversion. I think you can clearly see once again that uh, energy is it conserved or do we have to go for the work energy principle? Over here, energy is conserved because you do not have any external forces. So whatever the energy you have at the top, you will have over here. Okay. Okay, they say the angle that you make over here, uh, PQ makes an angle, the string makes an angle of 60 degree, right? When both parts of the string make an angle of 60 degree with PQ, this is when it comes to rest. Basically, it comes to instantaneous rest means again, when it comes over here, its velocity is zero. Can you, get, can you realize what's happening here? You release it, it starts coming down, but when the string stretches, it again comes to an instant rest and then it might again go up. Do you understand? Okay, so I'm only concerned about this uh, point from here to here, and they're asking us number uh, in part A to find the modulus of velocity of the spring. Basically, they're asking you to find lambda. Okay, how do you find lambda? Okay, first thing is uh, consider the energy transformation. How do you get the energy transformation at the very top to the bottom? What do we have? Normally, at the top, we say we have the, uh, the potential energy, right? So you have potential energy at the top, and you're coming down. Okay, and at the top, what about elastic potential energy? Do you have any sort of elastic potential energy at the top? PQ is the natural length, it's at 2L. Well. So have we done any stretching here? No. But when you come over here, you, do you see that the string is actually stretched? More, definitely it should be stretched more than this 2L, well, isn't it? So we could get the entire length of the string and actually get how much it has stretched, uh, stretched beyond 2L. Well. Shall we find that? Okay, first thing is let's get the length of the string. So if this is uh, 60 degree and you know this is 2 well, so which means this part of the string is L, isn't it? So uh, is it possible to get this length? So let's say this is uh, PEQ and let's say this is the point uh, X. How, how do I get the PEX length? Get me the PEX length. Okay, so then uh, the length Px, we could uh, consider this particular right angle triangle over here. We have a right angle triangle. Since the particle is at the midpoint, this length is L. So to get Px, I could consider, uh, we can't, uh, I mean, we could say Px cos 60 is equal to L, right? Because Px is the hypotenuse, we normally resolve the hypotenuse, right? So this Px cos 60 should be equal to L, agreed? So, which means Px equals to L over cos 60. So, can I have the value? Of what is 1 over cos 60? 1 over cos 60 with the calculator in degree mode. 1 over cos 60 is 2. So, which means uh, 1 over 2. So, it's 2 well. So, which means this Px part alone is now 2 well. Are you with me? So this part alone is now too well. Each part uh, should be too well. So which means the entire uh, string has stretched to a length of 4L. Okay, so now let's go for the energy conversion. At the top, we have potential energy, right? So at the beginning, initially we have potential energy, which we are going to lose or which we are going to gain. Potential energy, and when you see that you're moving downwards, the potential energy will be lost. So potential energy lost, the, the potential energy that you are losing, over here, you know, when, you're, when the string is stretched, you are definitely one. When the string is uh, starting to stretch, you start gaining elastic potential energy. So you start gaining elastic potential energy. Okay, so what's the potential energy that you lost? I think you need to find this height over here as well, right? This H. Okay, so we can get that H uh, by doing what? Px. I think Px uh, cost 60 uh, got me uh, over here. And this H is? Guys, can you see H is equal to Px sine 60? When you resolve the hypotenuse of the triangle, when you resolve the hypotenuse of the triangle, Px cos 60 is this, Px sine 60 is this H. Do you agree? So Px is 2L into sine 60. How much is sine 60? Sine 60 is root 3 over 2. So when 2 cancels out, you get H equals root 3L. Guys, can you see the height? The height is root 3L. Okay, so then uh, let's, okay, let's get the uh, energies now. Okay, so potential energy loss, MGH.
Elastic potential energy gain, lambda x square over two well shall we substitute. So mass, have they given us the mass? The particle of mass m, so mass is m. G and what about the height? Height is root three L equals lambda is unknown, the extension. Now over here, when we are talking about the extension, we are talking about the elastic potential energy of this entire string, right? We're talking about the elastic potential energy of this full string now. Okay, so because we are going with energy. So in this case, if you talk about the extension, now we know the whole string uh, had a natural length of the full complete string and natural length of 2L. But now over here, the complete uh, length is 4L. Guys, do you see how, then how much is the extension? If the natural length is 2L and now you can see the whole length of the string has become 4L, which means the extension is 4L minus 2L an extension square over two times, what's the natural length? Two times natural length is 2L. Two times natural length is 2L. Guys, are you with me? Or else, you, if you want, you could do it for one string alone also. You can apply the uh, elastic potential energy for one string and multiply that answer by two. Because sometimes we, you do realize in the previous questions when we had attached a, a point, I told you to consider each string separately. So you could get the elastic potential energy of the, each of the strings, uh, like one string on its own. Then if you consider one string only, uh, natural length is going to be just L, isn't it? I told you if you attach the uh, length is going to be half natural length. L, uh, natural length is L. So in that case, uh, it's 2L minus L. Okay, so in that case, it will be 2L minus L over two times natural length is L, but you have to multiply that answer by two because there is another string on the other side. Okay, so that is also okay. Okay, so you could do it like that. Okay, so get the answer now. I hope you guys are getting what I'm saying. Okay, so uh, you could do it like this or you could say lambda taking each string on its own. Uh, 2L, 2L is the length of one string. 2L minus the natural length of uh, one part of the string is L. Do you get it? When you attach the particle, the string, you divide it into two sections. Each section will be have a natural length of L. Okay, so we have discussed this in the previous exercise, right? Lambda x square over two times natural length is, since you're taking one part of the string, natural length is simply uh, L. Natural length of one part of the string is simply L. Agreed? And then this you must multiply by two because there are two parts of the string. Because there are two parts. We only consider the EP for one part. Okay, so you could do consider the whole string or you could consider one part and just multiply by two. Anything is okay. Okay, so then what do we get here? Mg into root 3L here lambda times 4L minus 2L is 2L, right? 2L square is 4L square over 2 times 2 is 4L. So 4 cancels and L cancels out. So you get here Mg root 3L equals uh, lambda L. So lambda, I think you can see L cancels out, right? On both the sides, L cancels out and you get root three mg or lambda equals uh, mg times root three. Is this clear? Okay. So guys, just to show you even in the other way, when you consider each string individually, Okay, with natural length L, if you consider each string in individually, the natural length is going to be L for each one, right? Then each string has extension at uh, the uh, complete length is 2L, natural length is L. So 2L minus L is the extension. As you can see here, 2L minus L, it's L square over two times. Natural length is now simply L times two because there are two strings. And I think you can see uh, it's the same story. The two and two cancels, the L cancels. I think you can see. I get the exact same thing here. Lambda L remains equals to mg root 3L. So lambda value uh, will not change regardless of which equation you use, the lambda value will be the same. Okay, are you guys clear on that? So just do one of the two methods. Okay, and then the next part suggests one way in which the model could be refined to make it more realistic. Okay, so making it refined means to make it more, uh, uh, how do you say, to take something into account that uh, that uh, normally occurs in real life. So uh, how could you uh, make it more refined? So one thing they suggest here is maybe you could take into account uh, 
that the spring normally when it comes to spring it might have its own mass so if you take the mass of the spring into account so this is just a way to make it uh, refined are you supposed to do any calculations here no you're just supposed to give a suggestion so how do you make it more refined for example we could consider that there might also be what a mass in the spring okay so taking that into account would make it better okay would make it better would make it more realistic okay so you can say uh, mass of the spring can be considered mass of the spring can be considered okay is this clear Question number four, a light elastic string of natural length one meter and modulus of elastic to 21.6 Newton has one end attached to a fixed point O. A particle of mass two kilogram is attached to the other end. So I'll mark down everything. Natural length is one. Lambda is 21.6 Newton. A particle of mass two kilogram is attached to the other end. The particle, okay, now the thing is, is this horizontally or is it vertically? Tell. So we have read the question and see how to how to uh, proceed to draw this. The particle is held at a point which is three meters vertically below O. Okay, they say the particle is held three meters vertically below, which means it's downward. Okay, vertically below O and released from it. They say they are releasing it from it. Find the speed of the particle when the string first becomes slack. Okay, guys, what does that mean? So over here, you need to realize first thing is. Okay, the natural length is one meter. They say that they have pulled it down to a total length of three meters. They say they have pulled it down to a total length of three meters. So natural length is one meter. Natural length is one meter, which means how much is the extension at this point? You have a two meter extension. Now, uh, they say they're asking you to find the speed of the particle when the string first becomes slack. So guys, over here, the string, when does the string become slack? When does the string become slack? So over here, when you release, you need to realize that this starts moving upwards. It starts moving upwards with an acceleration, and then it might come to a certain point, the equilibrium position, and then it might again start losing its speed. So over here, anyway, when you come to the natural length, the moment the particle reaches the natural length, that is where the string becomes slack. So this particle will come to its uh, starting point. Now, starting point, it will come to the natural length. When it comes to the natural length, this is the length of the string. Do you see? So you have to find the speed. You have to find the speed when it reaches this point. So what is the speed of reaching this point? Are you all with me? So this is what you have to find when you reach the natural length one meter. At what speed do you reach this one meter? So all you have to do is once again, what? consider energy. Consider energy so since there is a speed now you will have one more factor to take into consideration which is since the velocity is there you'll have to consider the kinetic energy okay so let's talk about the energies at the bottom and at the top so if they, they you are releasing this from rest okay so if you are releasing from rest initial velocity is zero okay so what do you have at the bottom when you start off this there's no gp you are at the very bottom so you don't consider gp and there is no ke since the velocity is zero you release it from rest so what do you have over here which energy you have elastic potential energy the string is stretched two meter so there is elastic potential energy this elastic potential energy you will lose you will lose this when you move up you lose the extension and then when you come to the natural length okay so this elastic potential energy loss there is no ke or gp over here right Okay, so this elastic potential energy loss is equal to at the top. When you come over here to the natural length, that's what they mean by the string first becomes slack. Okay, because it might go, why do they say first becomes slack? Because it comes over, it might pass over, go up and again come down. That's why they say first. Okay, so anyway, I want to directly consider the motion from here, directly here. This is the direct motion. Okay, so what energy do I need to consider at this point? You have, at that point, you have the kinetic energy. And, and the potential energy. So kinetic energy, is it a, a gain or a loss? At this point, you start at zero and you have some velocity V, which means kinetic energy gain and potential energy. Since you're moving upwards, it will be a potential energy gain. When you're moving upwards, it's a potential energy gain. Okay, so now all you have to do is to substitute the values into this equation and find the value of V. 
So let's do this lambda x square over 2L equals kinetic energy is half mv square, potential energy is mgh. Let's substitute the value. Lambda is 21.6, extension is 2, natural length is 1, uh, mass is 2 kilogram. I think basically we have almost everything, isn't it? Lambda is 21.6. Extension x is 2, so 2 square over 2 times natural length is 1 equals half into mass is 2, right? Into v square. v square is what I'm finding. Plus m is 2. g is going to be 9.8. And how, how about h? What is the potential energy? I mean, I to, uh, to gain the potential energy, how much of a distance are you moving vertically upwards? 2 meters. So h is 2. Okay, all right, so then, so then let's simplify here the half and two cancels and I think you can see the, I can easily make V square the subject 21.6 into two square over two minus two into 9.8 into two equals to V square. Type everything in the cal and get the answer. The final answer is two. So it's four, right? V square equals four. So which means V equals square root of four, two. Two meters per second. So the most important thing here is I think the word slack here. So when they say it becomes slack, it means you come back to the natural, you come back to the natural law. That is when the that is when an elastic string becomes slack. Okay. So part B, they say uh, you have to find the distance from O when the particle first comes to rest. Okay, what is that? You have to find the distance from O. O is at the very top over here, right? They want you to find the distance from O when the particle first comes to rest. Okay, so how do you find the distance from O when the particle first comes to rest? So there are actually two ways of doing it. The first thing is, uh, the distance from O in the sense now you do realize at this point when you reach the natural length you had a velocity of two meters per second which means we understand that it, is, it will continue to move up and since they say the distance from O where the particle first comes to us you do need to realize that it will be uh, it will slow down the velocity will decrease and there will be a point up over here where it will actually come to rest before it actually hits the ceiling okay uh, before it hits the ceiling okay so the task here is the task here is to find the distance that the particle reaches. So obviously when you come over here, the velocity will be zero. They're asking you to find this distance. They're asking you to find this uh, distance uh, from the ceiling from O when the particle actually comes to rest. So to do this, there are actually two ways that you could do. Basically, again, we can do the main method that we uh, did so far by using conservation of energy, okay? Okay, so we can uh, do this by using conservation of energy from this point to this point. Okay, so else you could do it again from the beginning, from the very beginning to the very top. Okay, I think over here, going from over here to here is a lot easier because then you don't have to work with what? If you take this point and to go to the very top, you don't have to work with, you don't have to work with elastic potential energy because when you add the natural length, there is no elastic potential energy because the extension is zero. When you add the natural length, there is no extension. So over here, uh, you could consider there's only Ke and at the top, you can consider the potential energy because when you reach the top, the velocity is zero. That's one way that you could do by considering conservation of energy. Another thing that you could possibly do here is since you have reached the natural length now, the moment you pass the natural length and you go up, you know the string becomes slack. The string becomes slack and basically, this particle moves as an object moving freely under gravity. Okay, so this is only done if the string is slack. When the string is taut, when the string is taut, which means it is stretched. When the string is taut, you cannot do that. Okay, so when the string is slack, you can apply any motion equations, V equal U plus AD, 
v square equal u square plus 2a. So you can use the motion equations for a particle moving freely under gravity and actually calculate the distance that it travels. So that's another way that you could do this. Okay, so I will go with uh, the energy way. Okay, both methods are okay. So part B, I want to find the distance below B, uh, below O, and the particle finally uh, comes to rest. Okay, so we can apply. So I will consider from here to here because I don't need to be worried about elastic potential energy. At the very bottom, we have the kinetic energy, which we will lose. And this is at the very top, we have the potential energy, which we have gained. So half mv square equals mgh, as you can see, mass is completely cut out. So uh, kinetic energy loss, half into what's the energy you start over here, velocity was two, right? So half into two square equals g is 9.8 into h. Okay, so you could get your answer in terms of g to start with, and finally, finally we could give in terms of uh, Final answer we could give to 2SF. Okay, so half into 2 square, that's 2. 2 equal GH, which means H is 2 over G. Guys, can you see? H means the distance that you actually moved up. H is the distance that you actually moved up. So this is 2 over G. So distance below the ceiling, distance uh, from the point O is going to be what? We know that the natural length is 1 meter, right? So from 1 meter, it has traveled H meters up. 1 minus 2 over g, how much is the answer? 1 minus 2 over g is? One minus 2 over g. 0 0.79598, 79, okay. So basically, uh, you know, when you use g as 9.8, now you know your g value is 9.8. If you use G as 9.8, you are supposed to leave your answer either 2SF or 3SF. So 0 0.7962 uh, 3SF, 0 0.80 to 2SF. Okay. Okay, moving on to question number five. A particle P is attached to one end of a light elastic string of natural length A. The other end of the string is attached to a fixed point O when P hangs at rest in equilibrium. So basically, it's again a vertical question. Okay, when P hangs at rest in equilibrium, the distance OP is 5A over 3. So guys, they're talking about the equilibrium position. So this is O. Uh, natural length is, what was the natural length? The natural length was a right so when when it's hanging in equilibrium they say op length the complete op length is 5a over 3 guys are you with me the complete op length is 5a over 3 so if the complete op length is 5a over 3 can i know how much is the extension at the equilibrium position how much is the extension 5a over 3 is the full length from 5a over 3 you subtract one name the so 5 over 3 minus 1 is 2 over 3. So this length, the extension is 2a over 3. Do you agree? Okay, so why do they give you the equilibrium position? So they have given you this for some specific reason, right? So let's actually uh, do what we can do over here because there might be some variable that we could possibly find. I think there might be something that's not given to you. I think probably uh, what's not given. I think you can see the lambda, the modulus of elasticity is not given, right? So this is a place where you could find that lambda because you need lambda to use energy. Okay, so what do we use at the equilibrium position? Always when you are at the equilibrium position, forces are in balance. So what are the forces here? You have the tension and you have the weight. How much is the weight? The mass of the particle is, have they given you particle is at the other end of the string? Okay, when P hands are the distance by way, okay. They haven't given you the mass. They haven't given you the mass, so we'll go with M. So I will use the mass as M, weight is Mg. Agreed? Okay, so let's apply the equation, tension equal Mg. Tension is lambda x over L equals to Mg. Lambda is unknown, extension is, extension is 2A over 3 divided by natural length is A equals Mg. A will cancel out. 
So you get here lambda equals 3mg over 2. So you get here lambda equals 3mg over 2. And then the, okay, so I got the lambda value. Now we'll move to the next part. They say the particle is now projected vertically downwards from O. Guys, do you see what's happening here? We are projecting this particle from where? From O, which means what? From the very top. You take this to the top. Okay, so you take the uh, particle to the very top. The string is slack. At the very top, the string is slack, right? So you take it to the very top and you project it downwards. Are you releasing it from rest? No, you are releasing it with, with a initial speed. There is an initial speed. Okay, you release it with the initial speed uh, u. Okay, the particle is now projected vertically downwards from O with initial speed u. And first comes to instantaneous rest at a distance 10 a over 3 below O. Okay, so let's mark that. Okay, so when you project this, it uh, falls a distance of 10 a over 3 below O. So basically, somewhere like over here, right? So 10 a over 3 below O. Guys, can I have the extension? Because that is the main thing I require, right? If the natural length is A, can I know how much is the extension for 10 a over 3? 10 a over 3 below O. So below O, which means from O to this point P is 10 a over 3. Can I know the extension alone? So 10 a over 3 minus 1 a. How much is it? 10 a over 3 minus 1 a? 7 a over 3. That is the extension. Are you guys with me? 7 a over 3 is the extension. Okay, so now uh, as we uh, did earlier, you know, you're going to use uh, the law of conservation of energy. By the way, is it possible for us to use uh, motion equations? We cannot use motion equations because in, over here, the particle, uh, though it moves to the natural length A under gravity, uh, after, the, after the natural length A, uh, the particle will move under the tension of the string. So when you're moving under the tension of the string, you cannot consider this as an object moving freely under gravity. Okay. So over here, you have to go. You must use the uh, energy uh, rules. So what are the energy rules we could use starting at the very beginning? And um, you know, it comes to instantaneous rest at the point uh, over here, right? Na over 3, it comes to instantaneous rest, which means the velocity at this point is 0. So guys, what are the, uh, 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 what do we use here at the very beginning? And at the very end, so at the very beginning, what do we have? You can see clearly we have what energy? Clearly you have, but I mean, you're at the top, okay. You have potential energy. And also since there is initial velocity, you also have kinetic energy. So when you come to the very bottom, you can see the velocity is zero. So there's no K and you're at the lowest level. So uh, there's no GP, but what about at this point you have what? You have elastic potential energy at the very bottom means you reach the place where you come to the velocity zero point. That's why they say it comes to instantaneous rest. That's why they use the word instantaneous rest. 10 a over 3 below, you come to instantaneous rest, which means the lowest point that you could possibly go. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's get the answer for, let's get the fact they want you to find U in terms of A and G. Okay. So let's consider energy. So what energy do we have at the very top? At the very top, as you said here, you have kinetic energy which you will lose or you will gain. As you can see, kinetic energy at the top and at the bottom, you have reach velocity zero, which means kinetic energy is lost. Kinetic energy loss, is that all that you have over here? No, you also have, since you are uh, at the top, at the, the topmost level, you have a gravitational potential energy. You have potential energy, which you will, since you're going down, you will lose it. So over at the very top, you have kinetic energy plus you have potential energy, kinetic energy, which you will lose and potential energy also, which you will lose. Equals to, at the very bottom, you can see there's no velocity, so no Ke, and you're at the very bottom, there's no GP. And so over here, you can see clearly the string is stretched. Over here, the string was slack. When the string is slack, there is no elastic potential energy. But when you're at the very bottom, 
the string is clearly stretched a distance seven a over three. Okay. Okay, so therefore there is elastic potential again. Okay. Okay, so this is equal to the elastic potential energy. Uh, it's elastic potential energy gain, right? Sorry, it's elastic potential energy gain because you are moving down and you are gaining uh, in uh, the extension. So elastic potential energy that you have gained. Okay, so kinetic energy is half m v square potential energy m g h elastic potential energy. Lambda x square over two. Well, let's substitute the values into their places. Okay, so let's substitute the m is actually not known here, right? We do not know the m value. Let's leave it as it is half into m into v square plus m g h. The h is the total uh, height, right? The total height. The total height above the lowest point here is seven a over three plus a. It's ten a over three, right? So m g h is ten a over three equals lambda. So lambda value we just found lambda is three m g over two. Lambda is three m g over two into extension. So at the bottom over here the elastic potential is lambda. Sorry, the extension we marked it clearly as seven a over three. So seven a over three holding square divided by two times the natural length is. Two times natural length is a. So you get here half m v square plus ten uh, m g a over three equals. Well, this is three m g over two times. This is forty nine a square over nine and into one over two way. Is it okay if I write like this? The one the denominator two way we could write as one over two way, right? So all multiplication so into one over two way. You could cancel things out and we are supposed to what make be the subject. We are supposed to make be the subject. So a cancels out. Uh, make be the subject. We have to make be the subject. The question is uh, actually here the v value. Find the energy loss at the very beginning. What's the v value? The velocity they have given it as it has what the letter u. They are asking you to find u in terms of a and g, right? Find the find u in terms of a and g. Okay, guys, I think we can clearly see m is uh, common to everyone. Shall we cut m out? So what do we get here? Half u square ten g a over three equals over here. Can you all simplify three over two g? Uh, so get me the answer in terms of a and g. Three over two into forty nine over nine into one over two. What do we get here? Three over two without the g and a into forty nine over nine into one over two. We get forty nine over twelve g a. Take ten uh, over three g a to the other side. Subtract. So I get here half u square equals forty nine over twelve g a. You have to subtract with ten over three g a. What do we get? Forty nine over twelve minus ten over three. Three over four. Three over four g a. So u square equal taking two to the other side. Three over four g a. Times by two. I took the two to the other side as a multiplication. It cancels. So you get here u square equals three g a over two. Three g a over two. So when you take the root, u equals. So it's a positive three three g a over two. Whole thing the root. The entire thing root. Only the plus answer should be considered. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the answer for fifth one. Uh, this is the answer for fifth one. Question number eight: A particle of mass two kilogram is attached to one end of a light elastic string of natural length one meter, and modulus of velocity forty newton. Okay, so you have a mass two kilogram, natural length is one meter, lambda value is forty newtons. 
the other end of the string is fixed to a point O on a rough plane. On a rough plane, do you see the word rough now? So which means we have an external force whenever the word rough is there. So rough plane, which is inclined at an angle alpha, where tan alpha is three over four. So basically you have an inclined plane where tan alpha is three over four. Guys, if they give you tan alpha, immediately the first thing we do is we can mark the triangle, right? The right angle triangle and give the uh, sine and cos ratio. So tan alpha opposite over uh, adjacent. So which means the hypotenuse will be three square plus four square square root. This will be five, right? So I can get the sine alpha ratio. Sine is opposite over uh, hypotenuse. So three over five cos alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse four over five. Agreed? Okay, so then uh, we have tan alpha, sine alpha, cos alpha. Let's draw the diagram. The particle is held at O. Okay, so basically you are, uh, there's a fixed point called O, the particle is held at O and released from rest. Given that P comes to rest after moving two meters down the plane, find the coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane. Okay, let's quickly draw the diagram. So you, this is your inclined plane. Angle of inclination is alpha. So you have this point called point O. This is the place where we fix the string. So they say initially the particle is held at O, which means at the beginning the particle was there at O. And what do they do? They and they release it from rest. You keep the particle at O and you release it from rest. Are you with me? Particle is released from rest. Particle is released from rest. Uh, and uh, the, given that P comes to rest after moving two meters down the plane. So moving two meters down the plane, moving two meters down the plane, the particle comes to instantaneous rest. Two meters down the plane, the particle is at, uh, is at rest. Again, it's at rest, right? Comes to instantaneous rest. Given that RP comes to rest after moving two meters. Okay, so basically you move two meters. And you are at rest again. Which means velocity is zero. So over here, you can break up this length. So how do you break the length? You know, natural length of the spring is one meter, right? Natural length is one meter grid. Natural length is one meter, which means the extension here is one meter. Okay, so then they're asking you what? Find the coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane. Okay, so your task is to find the uh, mu value. Okay, your task is to find the mu value. Okay, so in order to find mu, I think we will, uh, you, you do realize that since there is friction, there is an external force, can we uh, go with the uh, energy conservation principle? Can we go with the uh, conservation of energy rule? No, right? So we have to go with the work energy principle. So in the work energy principle, how does it state? The work energy principle states that work done against the external force or work done against, in this case, it's the resistive force, okay? Work done against the resistive force, which is friction. Work done against friction equals to change in energy. Why is there a change in energy? Because whatever the energy you had initially, do you have that same amount at the end? Now, earlier you had some energy, the GP, and when you went to the other place, you had KE, so it was fully converted. There was no loss, right? Energy at the beginning was exactly equal to the energy at the end. There was no there was no loss because energy was completely conserved. But over here, whatever the amount you have at the beginning, since it's a resistive force, you won't have that exact amount at the end. There will be some portion of energy that is lost due to work done against friction. So basically it's the initial energy. Whatever the energy you have initially, you need to remove, subtract from the final. Okay, so the energy you have at the beginning is the higher one. At the bottom, whatever the energy you have is the lower one, agreed? Okay, so there's uh, so much to find here when it comes to work done against friction. 
when it comes to work done basically what's the work done equation work done by any force is force into distance so work done by friction will also be friction into the distance you move uh, along the friction force okay so this is the uh, work done equation work done against friction is friction force into distance equal initial energy minus final energy okay so friction force uh, we'll have to find it the distance that you move along friction how much of a distance are we moving 2 meters and what about the initial and final if i could go with the uh, energy kinetic potential and elastic with the loss and with the gain so at the top now you know you start here at the top at o so when you start at the top at o with uh, and you start at rest and you know when you are at the top here the string is slack because you are at the beginning at o the string is uh, definitely there is no extension it at the very top the string is slack there is no elastic potential energy there is only gp okay so potential energy which you are going to okay uh, which you are going to what potential energy which you are going to when you go down the potential energy which you are going to lose potential energy lost the uh, so initial you have potential energy which you will lose okay so when you come down for the final stage what do you have at the final stage at the bottom what do we have what energy do we have yeah we have you know there's no velocity you have come to the lowest position which means there's no gp you have since the string is stretched you have elastic potential energy which you have which you have gained because there was no elastic potential energy at the beginning this this is completely you have gained it so the pe loss that you have at the beginning is not completely converted to ep or part of it is lost due to work done against friction so part of it is converted to elastic potential energy gain okay let's uh, put the values so friction force into 2 equals what's the potential energy loss you will have to find the now when it comes to mgh it's not just mgh right i mean what do we use for the h lambda what do we use for the x here h here mgh mass is mass was given to us right mass was 2 kg let's leave g as it is now and what about the height height mean i need the perpendicular height basically i need the perpendicular height because the vertical height sorry i need the vertical height so vertical height is going to be this right the vertical height the particle moved from this point to this point this is the vertical height how do i get the vertical height this angle alpha you could get it over here by using corresponding angle This angle alpha comes here through corresponding angles, and this h becomes the full length here is two meters, so it's two. Now cos alpha h is equal to two. Guys, h is equal to two. Sine alpha, are you with me? This uh, perpendicular height is equal to h sine alpha, two sine alpha. Resolving, is that okay? So m g h h is two sine alpha. Minus lambda, lambda value is forty. X square is one square over two times natural length is one. Agreed. So friction times two, uh, two g into two. That's four, right? Four g. Four g into sine alpha was uh, three over five. Forty into one square. That's forty divided by two. Uh, this is gonna be twelve g over five. I'm gonna keep this for now in exact form. Okay, twelve g over five minus forty divided by two is twenty. So friction equals twelve g over the two comes down multiplies with five ten minus twenty divided by two. Guys, I brought the two down. It it divided both of these terms by two. 12g over 5 the 2 comes down to the denominator 5 times 2 10 here 20 divided by 2 so you can simplify friction equals because this is not the final answer the reason i'm not going for the cal at this point is yet because it is not the final answer my final answer is to actually find mu okay so this is going to be uh, 6g over 5 right minus 10 newton okay the final push is to find the uh, new value the uh, coefficient of friction how do i find the coefficient of friction f max the friction is equal to 
mu r when you are moving f max is equal to mu r so friction value we found it as 6g over 5 minus 10 mu times children what the normal reaction what is the normal reaction over in here when you are moving in this particular manner you know normal reaction is perpendicular to the plane right normal reaction is equal to what normal reaction will be directly equal to what here this is the weight 2g so you know it's equal to the weight the perpendicular weight component right because you know even though you are moving uh, uh, along the plane perpendicular to the plane forces are in equilibrium so this is the alpha this is 2g cos alpha so the main rule here is that you use in m1 also normal reaction equals to 2g cos alpha and this is per, 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 totally in equilibrium perpendicular to the plane r is equal to g cos alpha okay so you can write here r is 2g cos alpha guys we know the uh, cos alpha value right what is the cos alpha value cos alpha is 4 over 5 So I get here 6G over 5 minus 10 times 5 over 2G into 4. That's 8G. I just brought it down. Are you guys okay with it? 2G into 4 is 8G, which comes to the denominator. 5 comes on top and multiplies the whole thing. I put a bracket around the whole thing because this should multiply with the entire term, isn't it? So now it's a matter of typing in the cal. G value must be used as 9.8. Okay, G should be used as 9.8. And then uh, you can get the answer 16 to 9.8 over 5 minus 10 times 5 over 8 times G is 9.8. So I get 11 over 98, which is 0 0.1122. So basically, answer correct to uh, answer correct to uh, 3SF 0 0.112. You need to give the value to 3SF because we use G value as 9.8. Whenever you use whenever you use G as 9.8, give the values in 3SF or 2SF, uh, giving uh, the uh, significance that you use. Okay. 